and welcome to Spirit Art, the show where we make artwork that is inspired by African cultures and other cultures from around the world. Today's featured painting is an image of a wind spirit. The diegesis of this painting is to emphasize the importance of wind energy and other forms of renewable and clean energy sources. Like many others, I believe that climate change is one of the most important issues of our day. And that's why I decided to paint this image. And there will be other images related to climate change in the future. In today's video, you will be seeing me applying the finishing touches to this particular painting, which I started a long time ago. Now then, let's get into the African influences that can be found in this painting. As I'm sure you've noticed, the face of this mask kind of looks like a windmill. And that certainly is part of the idea, but another thing that influenced its looks are the Bois masks of Burkina Faso. A little fun fact, if you're looking at an old African map, you'll likely not be able to find the country of Burkina Faso because it used to be called Upper Volta. After a revolution in 1983, the country was called Burkina Faso, which means the land of upright and honest men. Now, when I say bois masks, I'm specifically referring to the wooden masks, not the grass masks, which represent Zhuo, the son of their creator god. The bois culture might have been the first African culture I was introduced to when I was in college, so I have a lot of love and nostalgia for the bois and their art. With one exception being those repetitive whistles of theirs. Wanna hear the whistles? I'll leave the link in the description. The other blah instruments sound great, but not those whistles. To be fair, in some recordings they're not all that bad. It's just, when I was first introduced to Africa, <laughs> those were the kinds of noises I heard. That said, I don't want you to uh, leave here with the wrong impression of African wind instruments. The Mubuti people of the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, use wind instruments in a very enchanting way. The Nyanga panpipes used in Mozambique sound awesome, and there are of course plenty of other beautiful sounding wind instruments in other parts of Africa as well. As for why the Bois play their whistles in the way that they do, I've never found an explanation for that. But from what I know of other African cultures, my assumption is that the whistles might possibly be the voices of the spirits themselves. But take that with a grain of salt, since it's just my conjecture. Anyway, let's get back to sourceable info, because the facts are what's important, not my little theories. So as I said, the Bois are one of the first African peoples I learned about. And from what I remember, the wooden masks represent both ancestors and bush spirits, aka nature spirits. But that said, I don't like relying on my memory, because memory is not a perfect recorder. So, as I always do for my videos, I double-check some sources. Now, some sources, like the book A History of Art in Africa, just states that the masks embody bush spirits, whereas other sources, like the Met Museum, mentions both nature spirits and ancestor spirits. So you may be wondering, which sources do you trust in that sort of scenario? And the answer is all of them, so long as the sources are reputable. And that ties into the whole concept of multiplicity of meanings, which comes into play in a number of different African artworks. Basically, it's the fact that even within the group of people who made the artwork, different individuals of that indigenous group can hold different interpretations of the traditional art. And you should take all those opinions as being valid since they are from that culture and they live with those art objects. Anyway, since I mentioned reputable sources, you may be wondering what counts as a reputable source. Well, of course, the first-hand accounts of the African peoples are reputable, books are reputable, certain documentaries are, and some websites. If you're a student and you want to use the internet to help you write a paper on Africa, or any subject for that matter, teachers will tell you that you should only trust .edu websites and .org websites, like a museum website, for example. That said, do not trust Wikipedia. That's one type of .org site that should be avoided, since any random person can edit that. And again, if you're a student and you would like to use the information you learn from my shows, in a college paper, let me know and I will send you my sources 
so that you can look at those because very likely your teacher will not accept citing a YouTube video but he or she will accept the sources that I use so I can provide you with those sources if you need them. So getting back to the painting, as for which specific type of wooden bois mask inspired the face, I could have been thinking of the plank masks or perhaps the hawk and butterfly masks. I started this painting a long while back so I can't remember for sure, but as you can see I used some of the masks geometric elements and black and white color scheme. It's worth mentioning that although the Bois have worshipped Duo since ancient times, the Bois are not the originators of the wooden types of masks. They borrowed the general style from neighboring Burkinabe peoples such as the Nuna and Winyama. Speaking of which, here is an image of a Nuna butterfly mask. Look at all those adorable birdies and chameleons on its wings. Anyway, the Bois masks help humankind and the natural forces on which life itself depends. These masks perform during important funerals to honor the dead and to help them journey to the world beyond. Also, they dance in agricultural festivals to secure a proper progression of the seasons. And again, they dance at the rituals of initiation for young men and women where they learn various secrets of life. I hope you like the Bois because I plan on talking about them in more detail in the future. Moving on to the glyphs I'm painting, as stated in the last spirit art video, those are partly inspired by Bamum's script, which was invented by King Najoya. Bamum is also the name of his kingdom, which is in Cameroon. I can also divulge that there's even a few logograms in these symbols of mine. Logograms are symbols that stand for a singular word, like some of the symbols found in Kemet's hieroglyphs and the Ajagam's Nisbidi. But for the most part, my symbols are alphabetic phonograms, which are around 30 to 40 letters. I made quite a bit more letters than our familiar English alphabet because I find our alphabet to be inefficient. So as I stated earlier, this painting is all about wind energy. And although we in the USA have a government that's currently dismantling the Environmental Protection Agency and is in denial of climate change, we can still keep hope alive because most people in our country know how important this climate change issue is to the world. Whether you exercise your right to vote or join a protest or find some other way to help the cause, as long as we're willing to stand together, we can change the course of history. Thanks for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe!